So welcome to the London Film Museum for the 10th anniversary launch of the modern tour of Britain. It was a race that had some rather special footage of its own in 2012, wasn't it? A very route, some spectacular backdrops, big enthusiastic crowds, and three riders in particular who symbolised just how far we've come in recent years. Bradley Wiggins, racing on British roads as the winner of the Tour de France. Mark Cavendish, resplendent in the rainbow jersey of world champion. And at the end of it all, a British winner in the shape of the impressive and highly promising Jonathan Tin and Locke. I think cycling is much more part of the mainstream now, isn't it? It's got a large, more casual fan base, as well as the true diehards. In the past, the Tour of Britain used to merely cause a traffic jam. Now, much of the traffic is actually heading to the race. For example, 25,000 people descended on the Norfolk showground for a stage finish last year. Last year's race was broadcast live on 14 channels in 124 countries, on five continents, to almost 300 million homes. The highlights on ITV4 in the UK had an average reach of over half a million viewers per show. And here's a little reminder of some of the sights and sounds of our national tour. <laughs> gentlemen, thank you all for coming uh, and joining us on what is a very special occasion as we celebrate, as you said, 10 years of the Tour of Britain. It's lovely to see so many faces here who have been involved in so many of the previous nine tours and so many who will play a big part in this 10th uh, edition of the race and hopefully many more to come. We've come a long way in the 10 years since we revived the tour, and thanks to the support of partners and stakeholders around the UK, we can now dream of elements and stages that would have been impossible for any race in this country until very recently. The 2012 tour was a fantastic success. To see so many fans, young and old, at the roadside was outstanding. To see a British Tour de France winner and a British world champion in action on British roads was a fantastic reward for the hard work of many countless people. And then, to top it off with the first ever British winner of the Tour of Britain, well, we've got a hard act to follow. But with your support, we will. So we reached the moment that everyone here and cycling fans around the country have been waiting for the route of this year's tour. Scotland is the host of this year's Grand Depart, the perfect stage for the opening leg. We depart from Peebles in the Scottish borders, heading on a 225 kilometer route down to the Galloway coast before turning north <coughs> through Dunfries and race towards Drumlanrig Castle. Last visited by the tour in 2008, the Duke and Duchess of Bacluth have welcomed us back to the Queensbury estate for the stage finish once again. The stage will head through the estate and, finish, and the finish line before taking on a short finishing circuit of approximately 20 kilometres, allowing fans at Drumlanrig Castle to see the race twice. And don't forget, and I think Hugh mentioned it earlier, the day before amateur cyclists can experience the route themselves in the Two Rides Scotland making the Grand Depart weekend an even greater celebration of cycling. A day later, just a short hop over the border and return to Carlisle for the start of stage two. It will be a very different route to last year's leg from Carlisle, and I think I'm already on record as saying this will be our longest and most gruelling stage ever. The 225 kilometre route takes us through the heart of Cumbria, and the lake, past, past the world famous, past, past the world famous lakes of Windermere, Coniston and Derwent Water. Swallows and Amazons this won't be. With Honister Pass in the middle of the stage and a relentless series of climbs, 
in the latter half of the stage, we'll be looking to reshape general classification following this stage. For those of you who can remember back to our stage finish in Kendall in 2007, we will again be finishing on these banks. You probably all remember a very young Mark Cavendish who finished second on that climb. Anyone who was there then will remember just how tough that finish was. And if you weren't, I suggest you take to YouTube and look it up. Stage three is a departure for us with our longest ever individual time trial and a chance for the testers amongst the riders to get back time on their rivals following a tough day in the lakes. <coughs> Knowlesley Council are our hosts for the time trial, which will start and finish from Knowlesley Safari Park and include a section through the grounds of Knowlesley Hall, home to the Earl of Derby and his family. The time trial will be held over 10 miles, not only because that is a classic British time trialing distance, allowing fans to compare their time for a 10 to those of the world best, but also what better distance to have to celebrate this our 10th anniversary. Again, we have a very short drive south for the start of stage four in Stoke-on-Trent. Our sixth visit to the Potteries, and I understand plans are afoot from the City Council to really promote the city's cycling heritage through this and our other events in Stoke-on-Trent, the Tour Series round, which we look forward to being a part of. This year we'll be heading west from Stoke-on-Trent through Staffordshire, Shropshire and into Wales. We're very pleased to announce tonight that an increased commitment to the tour from the Welsh Government with a day and a half of the race in Wales. This starts with the finish of stage four coming after 191 kilometres of racing that takes us through Wrexham, Flintshire, Denbyshire, Conway and Greenwich before the finish at Clambellis. Riders will head through the heart of Snowdonia tackling Penny Pass in the final kilometres before dropping down to the finish alongside Lynn Padden with Snowden right in the backdrop behind him. And the television pictures, believe me, will be truly amazing. Stage five is a full day in Wales once again, <coughs> heading from Paris to Caerphilly. And this year we are starting in the far west of the county at McCunnell and taking the tour over new and very picturesque roads down to Booth Wells. A familiar route leads us over the Brecon Beacons before an altered run into Caerphilly and the traditional two ascents of Caerphilly Mountain. And I'm sure that the crowds in fancy dress, as we saw earlier on in the film, will once again be out in the force. Those are all Loop Road relatives, by the way, the Bolton and the guy in the Mankey. A bit of a Barley family. Don't forget in 2012, this was the stage where our own Jonathan Tien and Locke effectively won the tour, taking the IG Gold jersey before heading to his home stage in Devon. And Devon is where we head to next. And what I'm sure is going to be one of the talking points of tonight's announcement. Yes. <laughs> this year will be our fifth stage finish in Devon, with Biddeford, Tynmouth, Exmouth and Dartmouth all having hosted finishes. You will notice, if you know anything about geography, that they're all on one of Devon's famous coastlines. Well, this year, stage six will start from the coast at Sidmouth, but with our partners at Devon County Council and the lovely Jenny, I've added that bit in. <laughs> we are quite literally racing to the finish line. Haytor on Dartmoor will play host to our first ever summit finish. Come at the end of a six kilometre climb and providing yet another unique element to this year's tour. The crowds on Dartmoor during the past two tours have been absolutely phenomenal. So I'm sure riders can expect once again a brilliant reception for the final climb. It's a short and punchy stage at just 137 kilometers, but with a real sting in the tail. And I'm sure there are people listening now already clearing their diaries so they can be with us that Friday afternoon. We return to Surrey for our penultimate <coughs> stage, 
heading from Epsom to Guildford by the Surrey Hills. And like last year's final stage, this will not be easy, with Leith Hill and Barhatch Lane. And I just want to pause there for one moment because on the descent of Barhatch Lane last year, there was a rider that crashed and he was severely injured and he's with us tonight. He not only looks amazing, fully recovered, riding once again as a professional. So I'd like where to side Brandy to stand up, please. There's just one passage of Guildford High Street this year, but again, riders will be racing over the cobbles in the closing metres of the stage to add yet another element to the tour. And last year, it's the only time um, of all the years I've been staging professional bike races that I've truly been scared of the numbers of spectators that we crammed into Guildford High Street. And they reckon there were close on 60,000 people. And we saw that shot that was holding the Mark Cavendish one. And it was absolutely terrifying to, to know that you, you, you've got a venue that is teetering on the brink of not being able to accommodate any more spectators. And um, that was on a Sunday. We're now doing it on a Saturday. To our final day and a return to the iconic <coughs> circuit in central London. We couldn't go there last year because there was another small event on in London um, that year. And we'd like to pay special thanks to Transport for London for inviting us back into the city and enabling us to put on this great free-to-attend showpiece event. It will be our traditional circuit starting and finishing on Whitehall and reaching as far as the Tower of London with 10 laps to decide the IG gold jersey of our 10th tour. We haven't stopped there. There will also be another unique element for our final day in London. Ahead of the stage, we'll be putting on an international women's bike race, providing a great showcase for this country's top female cyclists to compete at the Tour in the heart of this, our great city. And we hope that many of the UCI's women's teams will come to London and take this opportunity to race on such an iconic circuit in front of what can only be assumed as being big crowds. Well, you'll also ensure that the British women domestic teams get an opportunity <coughs> to be part of this great event as we continue to showcase <coughs> women's cycling. So there you have it. The 10th edition of the Tour of Britain with a route that really does have something for everyone. It's a tough and challenging route, but one that will reward riders who go on the attack from day one. The past few years have seen truly spectacular fields, with many household names on the start line, and we look forward to more of the same <coughs> this coming September. Many of the domestic British teams are represented here tonight, and I'm sure already licking their lips at the prospect of taking on some of the best teams in the world. I look forward to seeing many of you in Scotland in September for the Grand Depart that will kick off our 10th anniversary. We hope to see you all at some stage along the route. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. Thank you.